your page. And the one thing that we're doing, and we're not doing it in great detail, but you can keep this in mind if you want to experiment with some things, is that you can sort of mix and match some of these things within reason. So for the most part, I'm only interested in positioning the big sections of the page, all right? And the stuff that's inside the big sections, I'm just sort of letting that fall into place, all right, and follow the flow model, which simply stacks one thing on another. But we actually can position stuff inside, uh, inside the, 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 the big containers that we have, and we can do things like that. And we'll probably get into an example of that um, at some point. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about is, let's see, what, could, what should we do? We'll do relative positioning. And I don't like relative positioning, all right? So I find it less useful than some of the other tools. But it's a case that you should at least know what it is, all right? So if you're working on a project, for example, and you see someone uses it, someone maybe that worked on it prior to you, at least you have an idea what it is. And, you know, there are uses for it. The idea of relative positioning is where it takes, it takes where something normally would be positioned and then adjust the position. What I mean by that is the normal default position for something follows the quote flow, right? So if I put, if I had, let's say, a header that went across the entire page, and then I had a navigation, and then I had content, and then I had a footer. It might look like this if I did no styling whatsoever. It would follow the flow. It would put these blocks <coughs> on top of each other. And we saw different ways that we can position them. Someone bumped there. I did. Okay. <laughs> Can, can you hit it again? Yeah. Okay. Oh, like this? Yeah. It's not working. Push. There we go. All right. Uh, if we didn't do anything with the position of these blocks, they would stack on top of each other. So what relative positioning says is this block would normally appear here with the top left corner here. We're going to adjust the top left corner. We're going to push it a certain number of, pe of pixels from the left, and we're going to push it up towards the top a certain number of pixels. So let's go and make our example with that. So let me go and download the example we had last time. Notice that, again, so far, we haven't made any changes to the HTML. We've just strictly changed the CSS in everything that we've done so far. A reminder to you, again, remember your portfolio is due. The first part of the portfolio is due tomorrow. I hope that's not a surprise. I didn't hear anyone gasp. 
So I suppose that's good. All right, I'm going to go and put this on the desktop and I'm going to copy prototype one. And Remember, prototype one looked like this. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of everything that dealt with the position, all right, in this, in this CSS file. So I'm going to go in here, edit the CSS file. And I'm going to get rid of everything that dealt with the position. So I'm going to get rid of the margin on all of these. That's the main thing I think that dealt with position. Is anyone else very sleepy this morning? <laughs> Me too. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Maybe it's the weather. Yeah, yeah you know, it got cooler and, and you know. I, I do love the weather. I, 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 do, I do love the, but I want to sleep during the weather <laughs> too. So yeah, I, I, I definitely, yeah, I'm not complaining about the weather, but I, I do think it has the effect of, of making me tired. I, I know. I noticed that the other day when I was uh, finishing up my class. I have a class that goes to um, one of my day, one of my days or two of the days of the week. I'm done at eight thirty, and then one of the days I'm I'm done at seven. And usually it takes me a few minutes after I finish my class at seven. But I was leaving at seven. It was dark out. It's like, when did that happen? You know when? Because it was like dark at eight thirty. I swear the week before. You know. And and then like now it's like boom seven o'clock you know it's 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 getting it's getting dark out and it's like ah oh. yep all right so I got rid of everything that dealt with position so everything now is just in the flow as they say stacked on top of each other and the only thing that I that I have really is. I've assigned a width, and I've assigned a width of 600 pixels to everything. All right? Now, I want to make this navigation look like this. So I want to put this, have it oriented vertically, and have it narrower. So I'm going to go, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do this. So I'm going to make the navigation. Instead of having a width of 600, we'll give it a width of 200. And I'm going to get rid of the navigation li. All right. And I will give a margin a top margin on the a nav li or bottom margin just to put some space in between them because they're sort of crowded on top of each other and I'll get rid of the text align center All right, there's the navigation the way I want it to be, or pretty much the way I want it to be. So now this drawing, or this page, looks like this page. So 
these two fall into place to where I, where I want them to be. All right, so I don't have to do anything with those. That's the one nice thing about relative positioning is if the thing falls where you want it to on the page, you don't have to say anything for the position. Just let the flow take care of it. But this guy here doesn't. This guy, we want to push it from the left, and we want to push it towards the top. So I'm going to give it a relative position. Let's make this wider. OK, thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that, by the way, because uh, I've had people like ask me that, that watch this online you know, and say, like, sometimes you have the wrong screen on. And it's like, ooh, you know, sorry about that. You know. All right, so I'm going to push that section over from the left. So I'm going to say left. I'm going to say, first of all, position relative. And relative means relative from where the flow would normally put this. So we've seen where the flow is going to put this. Relative to that, I want the position to be Fifty from the left. No, not fifty. Two fifty from the left. <coughs> All right. So I pushed it over. So now it's getting closer to this. And what I want to do, I want to push it up. So I'm going to push it up top, I'm going to give a negative number here. So I'm going to give it maybe a negative 350. Just playing around, just eyeballing it to see how it is. I could even do this. I could say height 350 px. All right, almost there. Uh, All right, so there. That's right in position where I wanted it to be. And the advantage of this is I didn't have to position every single thing. All right, I just positioned the one that I want to change. Now, if we go down here and look, unfortunately, that still follows the flow. All right, that's where this would be if there was no other positioning. So I have to push this up as well. So. I can say something like, first of all, I'm going to make the width of that 800 pixels. And I'm going to make the position relative and pull it up 380 pixels from the bottom, since that's what the other one's doing. Uh, maybe I'll make it 350 instead. And I'll make the width of this 900, and I'll make the width of this 900. All right, so there we go. So I've achieved pretty much the same layout as I did with absolute positioning with a little less code. So. That's sort of the advantage of doing the relative method. Questions on this? Now, one thing I can do, because the problem would be is if this guy here got bigger or smaller. If this guy got bigger or smaller, then this would still be down here. All right? In other words, if it got bigger, this would overlap with that, because I've lifted it 350. 
I could put a height in here. And I can also use the overflow option. So I could put the height on the section and make the overflow, I have to look it up. It's perfectly okay if you don't have every bit of CSS uh, memorized, right? Because there's a lot of stuff. But at least know like what to look for. So CSS overflow. <coughs> I can say scroll. And what that will do is that'll put a scroll bar. So that way I don't run any danger of this being too big. Because if it gets bigger, it will just scroll more. All right? Questions about this? All right. Oh, yeah, go ahead. How would you change the styling of the scroll bar? Good question. What don't you like about it? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's show you what. Okay. It is because it has a curved side. I would get rid of that by eliminating the curve on that. All right. That would do it. Um, how do we get rid of the, uh, the horizontal scroll bar? Auto is similar to scroll, but only adds where necessary. So if I make this auto, it doesn't add the horizontal scroll bar. And then what I would do is I would just remove the border radius. it look better. Uh, is there a way to keep a radius on a scroll bar? I doubt if there is. That might be one thing that I border radius a scroll bar with CSS. Well, here here's an answer. So it does look like there are some possible workarounds. Doesn't really look like it, but okay. Anyhow. Good question. I would just remove the doubt by not having the, <laughs> that, that definitely takes care of it. OK. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is called fixed positioning. <coughs> fixed positioning is different than absolute positioning. So far we've seen 
no positioning at all, which is the default, which is flow. Then we've seen absolute positioning. Now we, then we've seen relative positioning. Now we're going to see fixed positioning. And fixed positioning is like this. Absolute positioning is relative. Pardon me? OK. Relative positioning, or absolute positioning, is absolute to the top of the page. So if I put something at 10 from the top, 10 from the left, and I use absolute, if I scroll down, that's going to go off the page if I scroll down with absolute positioning. All right. Fixed positioning is based on the top of the window. So if I have something with a position fixed, 10, 10, and I scroll down, it stays right smack dab in that position. So that's good for things like headers, footers, and what I like to use it for, navigation. Because with that, I can keep the navigation on the page no matter where I scroll on the page. So if I scroll down, the navigation is still there. All right? So that's the next thing that we're going to do. All right, so I'm going to make another copy of this. edit the CSS. And first thing we're going to do again is we're going to get rid of all the margins. I'm going to do this wrong first, and then I'm going to come back and do it right. So I got rid of all the margins. I'm going to go in and I'm going to make the navigation again be stacked vertically instead of horizontally. So I'm going to get rid of display inline. And I'm going to get rid of margin left. I'm going to put margin top or bottom, just like I did in the other one. So I got rid of all the margins. And now if we look at this, it's like that. All right? And if we scroll, it scrolls with it. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this guy, I'm going to adjust the width of these. I'll make the width of this 900. I'll make the width of this 200. I'll make the width of this 600. And I'll make the width of the footer 900. All right. Actually, I lied. I'm going to make the width of the header and footer 600 as well. Now, I'm going to do this wrong first. 
I'm going to give the nav a position <coughs> top 10px, left 10px, position absolute. Now remember, with absolute, it's going to base it from the top of the page. So if I scroll, it's going to be affected. So it's not going to be horrible, but it's not going to be exactly what I want. So let's look at what this gives us first. And notice that there's overlap here. There's overlap because I got rid of the margins. So if I put in a margin to push these over, then there will no longer be overlap. So I'm going to put on each of these, the header and the section and the footer, I'm going to say margin 300 pixels. Margin left 300 pixels. So that will push it over 300 from the left. So, looks like that. And the problem is that it scrolls with it, which maybe we want. If we want that, then we're done. But it might be nice to put this glued down, so regardless of whether I scroll or not, that stays in there. And that can be changed by changing the position absolute to position fixed. Now it looks like it's in the same place, but as I scroll, the navigation stays fixed. Again, I think that's particularly good for navigation. Uh, <coughs> remember how key uh, a site's navigation is to the usability and uh, the design of the page. So that's something that's kind of cool to do, is, is to lock those down, all right, so it doesn't move. Question, because this is, this is a little bit of a ungraded self-quiz. Instead of margin, okay, instead of margin left to bump these over to the left, what else could I have done? I could have centered it, all right, that's true. I could set the position of relative and say, push over to the left. So I'll just do it on one of these just as an example. So like with the header, instead of saying margin left 300 pixels, I could say position relative left 300 pixels. does the same thing. In both cases, it pushes it over 300 from where it, quote, should be. All right. Thank you. Yes? The same thing? OK. All right. <coughs> Okay, so these are three different layouts. And again, keep in mind as we're doing this, we could change a lot of other things related to the page as well. Uh, one of your assignments, uh, maybe a couple of them, you're asked to create two different pages, uh, to, or rather take the same page and style it two totally different ways. I want you to style it wildly different, not just a little different. So uh, some of the submissions I got in, and I realized we hadn't gone over too much CSS at that point, but like there's a red and a yellow version, but everything else about the page is identical. Change the size of stuff. 
change the, the fonts, change background images, change all kinds of stuff uh, when you're doing this. Let's go and let's just play with this and uh, change the various uh, aspects of this. So we could make the, let's change the font. Um, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> if, that, if that's what you want, if you want a very specific font, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that, that is a good idea. Um, here we'll go and let's see. I want to do something different. Let's do... The font family on the H1, let's do Courier New. And in case they don't have that, let's just use a generic sans serif font. Um, and let's use... Georgia, Garamond, and the generic serif font for this. And I'll get rid of the background image. Notice how that gives a, a totally different feel to the site. All right. We could play around more with these. We could center the content in the nav. We do have it centered. We could make each thing the same width. The link. So I could say... with 100 pixels. Oh, that doesn't work. Why not? Because in order for it to be, for the width to take, the display has to be either inline or block, or uh, I'm sorry, it has to be either inline block or block. So in this case, I can say block. And now all of a sudden, it the width sticks. Uh, I could make the text size bigger. Right now, the font size for the link is 0.8 em. 0.8 em means 80% of the normal size. So I could maybe make it bigger and say 1.2 em. All right to really let the links stand out a little bit more. Mouse over effect is, is kind of cool. We could change that if we wanted to. Maybe make the hover, make the background white. We could even do something with the border if we wanted to on the hover. Um, let's try something like this. Let's make the border have a bigger radius so that as you put your mouse over it, the actual shape of the button changes a little bit. We 
to give you more of a visual cue that that is the active link. Now, uh, again, let's, let's go and find some colors to uh, put on here. Let's make our play page blue for the most part. And let's look at what we want to do. This one. I don't want that. <coughs> How do I close that? So let's make our header have a background of that. Actually, let's make the body have a background of that. And let's make the header darker. For as much as I like this site, it's a little hard to use. Okay, yeah, that, that's true. Uh, it, I also have a feeling that um, it's, it's tough sometimes looking, like with the bright window behind it, you know, looking onto a dark screen with a bright window behind it as I'm sitting here in class. You know, if I was sitting at a, like a normal desk where there wasn't the bright outside behind it, it probably would be a little easier to read too. And something didn't work. Got the pound sign. two backgrounds. Good eye. Okay, well that obviously isn't very uh, easy to read. So I could change the color of the text. And I could either go with just plain white or if I want to get fancy, I could try this. Don't know if I like that. Let's just go with white. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Again, you don't have to do a lot. And like with colors, remember, I'm using colors not just for the heck of it. I'm using colors to identify the different sections, to identify the different pieces of the page that have different functionality. These look this way to give a visual cue that this is a navigation. All right? This looks this way because that's the header. That sets that apart along with the border from the main section. And I could probably do something with the footer as well.
So I'm not just using colors to say, oh, I want to make this look pretty. I'm using the colors in a very purposeful way to set apart different sections of the page. Yes. Okay, there we go. So again, the colors are used in a very purposeful way. Notice also, in addition to the colors, I'm using a second way to designate things into sections, and that is by having borders around them. All right? That's very important when you get into, say, people that are colorblind. Because people that are colorblind are, are not always going to be able to distinguish the colors. So if colors are critical to understanding the way the page is laid out, you should have a second method in addition to the colors that they can use to get the understanding of the, how the page is, is organized and how the page is laid out. So in this case, I have borders and. So if I was seeing this in grayscale, if I was not seeing colors at all, <coughs> I could tell by the borders. Secondly, even if I was colorblind, this would look different than that, right? Uh, because this is light on dark, this is dark on light. OK, so uh, that, would, that would be um, obvious even to someone that was uh, colorblind. Questions on any of this? Questions on your portfolio, which is due tomorrow. How many of you were shocked to hear that your portfolio is due tomorrow, the first part? You can admit it. OK. Uh, you remember what a portfolio is, and I've done the example, all right? So it really, if you've kept all your labs, it really should be a big deal. Your main task is going to be to organize those into folders and to provide links from your portfolio page to each individual lab, and then links from the lab back to the portfolio page. So that's your main thing to do. Make sure the links work when I download it and grade it on my machine. So in other words, do not use something like C colon backslash program files slash blah, 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 because I don't have those directories on my machine. So use what are called relative paths. So if you're going down a folder, put just the name of the folder in. If you're going up, use the dot, dot notation. OK? I'm going to end a little bit early today because I don't want to start the next topic and to give you additional time to work on your portfolio and see if you have any questions. So questions. All right. We'll continue with this and do a few more layouts. I think we have three different other layouts that we're going to cover. And we might get them all done on Wednesday. We might, might carry over into next week. Again, this is very important because being able to position stuff with CSS is key to really understanding CSS and be able to design the pages the way you want them to be. All right, we'll see you up in lab.